All right, video is live. Dr. J, stand by for audio. All right, good day. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Live the Fuel show. So today we are building some steam for our audience, for you, the newer listeners, for you, the ongoing and continuously loyal listeners. Uh, this is being recorded right now in late June. We recently, as of today, June 23rd, as I'm recording this, aired an episode with our regular sports nutritionist, Aaron Sparold, and we decided to target this viral video going on right now from the AHA. There's video content, there's blog content. Long story short, we're talking a lot about coconut oil this week, and I thought, who better to bring back on the show <laughs> than a gentleman known as Dr. J from AJ Consulting Company. He was a past co-host for you who are the regular listeners, episode 72 where we brought him on, we talked a lot about estrogenics and chagrin and tonic and estrogeneration and a lot of buzzwords you probably never heard of before. So we're gonna have a little more fun today because this gentleman is just as pumped as I am to bring the truth to you, the listeners, about this crazy debacle known as coconut oil and saturated fat and how the AHA has their heads up their butts. So without <laughs> further ado, welcome back to the show, Dr. J. Thanks for having me, yeah. <laughs> I did a different kind of intro there for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's perfect. Oh, all right. I'm going to breathe because I know that you can just really kick us off here. Why are you and I chatting today, man? Well, I mean, I can't believe anybody would come out and say coconut oil is, is unhealthy in any way. I mean, there's so much research against that idea. But well, really what the AHA did, in my opinion, is they just lumped coconut oil I mean, coconut oil is a saturated fat. Yes. Right? We'll explain. Let's be real. Let's be real. We'll explain the details of that. Yeah. So what they did was they lumped it together with all other saturated fats, and then they and then they used this blanket statement that so it's, so it's bad, right? Well, like, what what really frustrated me on that point of blanket statement is you have a social responsibility as a governmentally influenced organization that is supposed to be helping guide the general public. It and does yet, too. I mean, people are influenced by it. Big yeah. time. Yeah. And the problem is if you do a blanket statement on your blog, yeah. then the first article that I read was from USA Today. So you take a bloated statement that has lack of, of consistency and accuracy, and then you feed that to the public media. Oh yeah. my God, dude, do you have any idea what that's going to do to the general public as far as accuracy of education? Yeah. Like, it's think insane. before you hit publish. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, what happens sometimes with these scientists, and I'm, and I'm, a, I'm a scientist, you know, I've done research, peer-reviewed studies and everything. Yeah, real quick, well, let's refresh the newer listeners, okay? What's, what is your credentials again? Well, so I'm a PhD in biochemistry. Thank you. From Boston University. And uh, it's, it's ironic because my, you know, my book is about artificial estrogens, but my actual PhD thesis research was about fats and cholesterol. Like yeah. I have a 315 page thesis I wrote specifically about cholesterol, good fats, oxidized fats, bad fats, all the nuance there. And I mean, just to say right off the bat, I don't even think, you know, saturated fat is necessarily bad. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, never mind coconut. I mean, coconut oil is a whole different thing, but just to say saturated fat is bad as a blanket statement, I think even that's absurd just to, just to get that out there. But, uh, you know, when you're doing scientific research, there's kind of this culture of researchers and this, this kind of, uh, you know, consensus, people kind of agree with each other. A lot of these researchers work together in collaborations and they go to conferences together. So, you know, the problem is, is they get into kind of their own little world and, you know, they, they don't actually work with people on nutrition in the real world. I mean, they do lab experiments, but a lot of these scientists, especially in, within the AHA, they're not actually working with actual, you know, people. Well, and, and real quick on that point, you're, just so you, for our listeners, guys, yeah, we do want to beat them up a little bit, but <laughs> you on your last episode with me, your first episode with me in our, in our audience, you even brought up how when you were back in school and you were doing your research and doing your, you were doing some, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, brain health and all of that. Yep. yep neuro, and you, we, you and I had joked around because all of these guys doing the research had never even done fasting or detoxing yep. and yep. they were studying the impacts of it and they never even did it themselves. So right. we're That's not right. just saying the guys influencing AHA and all these other organizations, like this is a blanketed issue. That's right. That's a good point. Yeah. 
I mean, and, and, you know, I, Obviously, you and I are both networked with a lot of, you know, influential people in the health world that are really genuinely awesome people. And, you know, just from being on a lot of podcasts and things, I noticed all of these people right across the United States. I'm talking about people like Mark Sisson and, you know, just all kinds of big, big names. People that like real. Dr. Jack Cruz, you know. Yep, 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 yep. They all came out and said, like, what is going on with the AHA? This report is ridiculous, you know just across the board, you know, people that actually are working in the health world, you know, on the front lines with actual people, they all recognize this as, uh, you know, not only just false, but misleading, like you said. And that's what's frustrating about it. Well, and, and so for our listeners, guys, if you've not, and we have listeners in other countries, so let's, let's help update them. <laughs> because yep. I don't know if you've done the research, but last night, I tried going to find the original AHA article that was published. Yep. I can't find it. <laughs> I think yeah, they redacted it. I mean, there's, oh, really? cause, I, I mean, yeah. well, I don't know because I mean, I, you know, hold on, I'm going to help you out here. Let me share a screen for our YouTube watchers of the show as well. And I, that help you. I went on, here we go. I'm on the American Heart Association and I searched for coconut oil. And there's multiple articles that come up, but the ones I'm getting is now, now, as of today, <laughs> yeah. is I got what? Saturated fats, why all the hubbub over coconut? Uh, here we go, advisory replacing saturated fat with healthier fat could lower cardiovascular. Like I'm scrolling through here, eating healthier fats could reduce heart disease. I'm not hiding anything, I'm right on their website. Right. I don't see the original title. That yeah. came out. Do, do, do you remember the exact title of the article? Because I can't find it now. No, but I mean, what they do, and I've done this by, myself, by the way, what scientists do when they publish peer reviewed papers is they, uh, you know, they write a paper, but before they publish it, they send out a press release with kind of their summary of what they think the results were. Yeah. And so I, I don't know if they published it directly on their website. They, I don't know. Yeah, because like right here, this article is June 15th. So that would be last, well, a little over last week, advisory replacing saturated fat with healthier fat, could lower cardiovascular risk. And then the newest one was the 21st, so two days ago. And that's the first one that's coming up here, saturated fats, why all the hubbub over coconuts. So yep. whether or not they pushed the original, I'm not, I don't even know if I can really officially call it a study because it's not a that's study. Right. That's, no, that's my problem with it, yeah. Right? Like, what were you just holding up? Yeah, so well, so they published the the yeah, president me, of the AHA and a few other people on that. Shut my share off so we can get you in a better. There we go. Yeah, so the president of the American Heart Association, there they just is. published this paper, and this was in the Journal of Circulation. So that's like a you know a okay. separate journal, like a more official journal within the AHA. You find stuff better than I do. <laughs> well, I mean, I have I have access to all these professional science journals. No fair. <laughs> <laughs> It, actually, I have friends that literally won't publish in some of these journals because they restrict the access. Interesting. And it is a frustrating thing. Even for scientists, it's kind of ridiculous. That okay. Let me ask you something on that real quick. I don't want to get off of our core subject here today for education, but this is educational. Why are they restricting access to peer review? Is this, is this peer review content or just yep. that, okay. hey, okay, so why are they restricting access? Doesn't I mean, the, I right, doesn't the public have the right to know all this stuff? Well, that's the crazy thing because it is government funded. So we're, we're paying for it as taxpayers, but they restrict it because they're trying to make more money, you know, right. these scientific journals. So like, let's say you started your own scientific journal and, you know, you want to make more money off of it. So you just restrict the access and make universities across America pay, oh, to, pay to be members or have accessibility to it. And it's, it's an okay. outlandish fee. I mean, it's really expensive. And the other thing is the AHA, I'm actually a member of the American Heart Association, which is crazy. Hmm. because they force you to be a member in order to publish in a, in a huge number of journals. So that's how they get, that's how they get it done. I see. And maybe I've lost it. And I just, because I, it's, it's frustrating. And I, I'm going to speak as a frustrated consumer because I don't have your credentials. Right. So when I look at this, I, you would think the American heart association, right? God bless America. You know, uh, and it says right here, American Heart Association, and I'm on the news page. So basically, they, ha they reserve the right to filter and control whatever they want to feed to us and then charge professionals like yourself who are trying to give us the latest education out there yep. and then limit access to it. Like, what right. gives them the right? 
I don't want to, I don't get it. It's my tax money, man. Come on, give it to me. No, I, I agree. And, and, and there are some really great journals out there that are open access. And so it, it, you know, as a scientist, I think scientists are, are some of them are, and, and some of them are very aware of this and some of, and there's kind of a growing awareness that, yeah, we should be publishing in these open access journals so everybody can read the work and everybody can benefit from it for sure. It's a good okay. point. Yeah. And it's crazy because it wasn't that long ago when the American Heart Association was actively promoting margarine. In fact, I, th I still think they promote margarine. I mean, they have some crazy... Uh, real quick, on, again, margarine. Yeah. Dude, there's nothing whole food about that. That is a completely manufactured, man-made product. We created that, okay? Right. Right. Butter, for example, like all you're doing is because I went to a historic farm when I was a little kid and they're sitting there with a wood stick and they're just churning and making butter. Like they're not like manufacturing it per se. I mean, a lot of people think that's still a manufactured product because you buy it in a nice little rectangle or in a little tub. And I'm like, no, if you buy it in its purest fashion, it's not overly manufactured product. It's actually relatively a pretty whole food. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if they do it right, you know? And I mean, I think we should talk about just all different types of fats and maybe yeah. we just start with butter. Like, let me just tell you about butter because, you know, there's different qualities of butter, as you know. I mean, I know I'm you I'm a Kerry gold man. Yeah, I am too. And I've <laughs> been for a lot of years because it's so much better for you. And that's, that's a huge issue. You know, we're talking about issues within scientific research in general. And just, just, to, just imagine this, okay? Imagine you do a scientific study on butter. What butter do you get? You just go to the grocery store and get just standard conventional butter like everybody else. people don't know. They don't yeah, read they don't the labels. There's a difference. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that butter, you know, is, is from cows that are being just loaded up with corn and other quote unquote designer feeds and all this stuff with soy. And, uh, you know, so it turns out to be essentially just corn fats, corn and soybean fats. Mm-hmm. And, you know, which is, by the way, which is mostly like 16 carbons long, 18 carbons long. Why does that matter? Uh, I'll explain in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So are, we, are you connecting over to the whole triglyceride thing? A little bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll get to it. Yeah. <laughs> but just, uh, just, just, just flow, man. Teach us. Well, well, you know, if you have grass fed butter, like Kerrygold, it even looks different. I mean, there's more vitamins, especially K2. And, Look at the color. Beta carotene. Yeah. Yeah. But, but even the fat composition changes. So there's more things like DHA and ALA, you know, these healthy fats. And uh, why that matters is because our brain is predominantly made up of DHA. You know, and I like to tell people, like, I like to say it like this, like uh, below your neck, that's mostly 16 or 18 carbons in most people. Okay. Right? But above your neck, that's mostly DHA fat which is fascinating to me. Well, and I've always, cause again, I'm not at your level, but I use refer to, I just tell people like, well, and I forget the exact number, but I always just throw out there. I'm like, okay, literally your brain tissue is like 70 to 80% fat tissue. Is that accurate? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. But you're actually getting more accurate than that. You're saying it's specifically the type of fat or the type of fat cellular type is yeah, yeah. called a DHA fat cell, right? Yeah. And, okay. and, yeah, that's a great, that's a, that's a great clarification. And I'm trying um, to bring you know, up my carry gold stuff for you, but just keep going. <laughs> well, people, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, I mean, we, we know fat, you know, fat cells are loaded with triglyceride and they're, they're storing a lot, you know, fats, but also every single cell has a membrane around it. It's called a bilayer. And that membrane is made up of phospholipids, which you know, seems like a, it sounds like a confusing term, but phospholipid just means phosphate and then two fatty acid tails, two fats. Okay. So essentially every cell in our body, including our brain is surrounded by fats, right? They're called phospholipids, but they're fats. And so okay. we can change that, that those membranes, the composition of those fats by eating healthy fats and it, and our brain you know, that's where the most of the DHA is, is it, it makes up those membranes surrounding the cells. And DHA, by the way, is 22 carbons long. I mean, it's a huge fatty acid compared to these 16 and 18 uh, fat, carbon fatty acids that are found in corn and soy. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, eating grass fed butter is an entirely different discussion in terms of scientific research. So if you're doing a study and you're just using, you know, like I said, corn, corn fed cows, soy fed cows and, and testing that butter on animals or people. Yeah. You're going to find some health problems because there's problems with 
the actual fat, you know, and the, all the other chemicals, of course, like we talked about in the last episode, oh, yeah. you're going to have health problems. But then what the scientists do is they conclude that butter is the problem. It's, a, it's the same thing with bacon, right? When they do studies on bacon, they use this bacon with these pigs that are just eating chemicals and all this junk. And then they conclude that the bacon is bad for you, right? It's like, what did you put in the animal to begin with? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, there's so many studies like that, that literally we just need to, you know, people, people oftentimes they're not aware enough to discard all of those studies be, you know, or at least kind of, at least kind of stipulate that, look, those studies are with corn and, and soybean fats. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what I try and get to people too, is that, and it goes back to that social responsibility of AHA and all these other organizations is that guys like, and no offense to this even goes out to myself and my fellow listeners, you know, our followers. It's like, guys, like, it's okay. We're all at a different point in our healthy lifestyle timeline. Some people are just getting going. Some people are at my level. Some people are at your level. Okay. Dr. J is at a different level. But the point is, <laughs> is that we all eventually start pulling our heads out of our butts and realize we need to start becoming our own inner physician, right? Our own self-taught. We have to be doing our own study. But initially, the people that are earlier in the timeline, they don't know any better yet. So if they are just going to look at the title of the article, hell, you'll be lucky if they read the first paragraph of the article. They just see the first title about coconut oil and saturated fats and say, oh, well, that's off. I'm not going to buy that anymore. Yeah, that's insane. It's frustrating. I mean, now, and, then, yeah. and then eventually maybe some of these listeners today are going to leave this episode knowing a little bit more about their fat makeup, for example, that you have just helped them digest right now. So I'm sure people, I guarantee you, people listening to this episode are like, I've never heard anybody say that ever. <laughs> uh, I know. Well, let me tell, talk about coconut oil specifically because, you know, I'm talking, one of the reasons I'm writing a book on this, you know, this book about, I'm going to write, it's called Blubber Brain. Yeah, it's, I figured this is going to help. You're, you're going to have a chapter on this, aren't you? <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> it's going to be a whole AHA chapter. I just, I hope so anyway, but <laughs> go ahead. Well, um, you know, coconut oil, you know, I'm talking about the length of fatty acids, you know, these, these little specific fatty acids, uh, you know, like I say, corn and soy, mostly 16 or 18 carbons, DHA 22 carbons, just to give people relative numbers here. Coconut oil is mostly eight to eight to four, eight to 12 carbons long. You know, they're really short. So they're called medium chain, but they're pretty small. And, and for our listeners, some of us are fellow biohackers and bulletproof guys like me. And we talk about MCT oil. Dude, yep. MCT oil is just coconut oil. Yep, yep, that's where <laughs> I get it from. Yeah, and 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 it's good for you. And I mean, that's the point. I mean, yeah, it's saturated. Saturated, by the way, just means it doesn't have double bonds. So, in fact, you know, saturated fats is it's better to cook with saturated fats, like okay. Kerrygold, like Kerrygold butter, like you know, like uh, coconut oil, you're better off cooking with that. You don't want to cook with olive oil or corn oil or pretty much any of these oils that have double bonds that are unsaturated right. because you start oxidizing the fat. In fact, I think, you know, one of the, one of the things I'm going to kind of explain in my upcoming book is that, you know, you remember when trans fats came out and, and everybody's, you know, way back when, I don't know, in 1980s when they started making trans fats and maybe even earlier, mm -hmm. They were saying trans fats are good for you. Yeah. Or at least they're not bad for you, right? Well, and because they were trying to justify their new position. That's right. Yeah. About, oh, right. well, we removed, for, I mean, for, real quick on the fast food market. Uh, I, for, who's the, I forget that gentleman who influenced all the governmental change. But anyway, they removed, they removed fat, uh, animal based fats. They removed those from the fryers, for example, and convinced them to use vegetable oils, which yep. years later they realized oops, when yeah. you superheat a vegetable oil, it it's changes oxidized. it completely. And, yep, yep. Well, yeah, and, not, that's not, not designed to handle that. Well, they were specifically even making trans fats, you know, in, <laughs> in, in these production facilities. And they were telling people it's fine. And some of the researchers were coming out and, and kind of uh, confirming, quote unquote, confirming that it was fine to use trans fats and maybe even healthy. And I, I went to a scientific talk. I can't remember the guy's name, but he, he was either from Harvard or MIT. He's real famous but I've been to so many of these talks, but I, I'm trying to track this down from my book, but he specifically came out and said, when he first started researching trans fat, he discovered that it's really bad for, for us. 
And he started saying that openly at scientific conferences. And he just got like, basically they were laugh. They literally were laughing at him on stage. And this is a pretty famous researcher. And they were just about throwing tomatoes at him. I mean, you know, and, and now it's, now it's become so obvious that trans fats are bad. Well, and not to get off the science, but let's look at history. I mean, people laughed at Albert Einstein. I mean, yep. they're some of the most powerful people in our time were ahead of their time. And yeah, unfortunately, their intelligence and their genius and their accuracy, because they spent all that time figuring that out, took them to a level beyond comprehension. And because the status quo or the greater, the greater population either wasn't even opening their ears to even listening or just was still stuck in the present. They weren't looking that far in the future. And it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. But I think yeah. it is kind of funny you bring this up like, oh, yeah, that guy was a very famous researcher and that still wasn't even enough to yeah. get him to justify his point. Yeah. And well, and now I think that's what's going on with oxidized fat. I think oxidized fat is the new trans fat. I mean, people don't say it's good for us, but, you know, there's well, no How do you guidelines. relate to the oxidized fat, for example? So like to help people find this or be aware of this. Yeah, well, that's when you cook things like olive oil. You know, olive oil is phenomenal for your health. There's no question. I actually, from what people that I've spoken with and a couple other biologists, they basically say, to be fair, nothing of it's, again, because I support coconut oil, but uh, they actually tell you like olive oil is actually a better, one of the, really the best. If you can get pure olive oil, like I, I've talked about before, I get the Villa Capelli from Italy. That yep. has been untainted. It is pure. They literally use the old fashioned stone grinders and squeeze the oil out of the olives. Like, and nice. they don't add in any other oil. Unlike yeah, with a lot, yeah. a lot of stuff's happening in this country. Like I was just sharing it. I'm going to share it again because I'm sure this will also frustrate you. Did you know that Kerry Gold sold out? I saw that. No, yeah, we right were, here. We we're on, on Facebook. Reduced. Going back. Yeah, I put that on Facebook. Oh my god, I was pissed. You commented on that. Yeah. I was like, Are you kidding me? You guys already had it right. But right here, you got Kerry Gold reduced fat Irish butter. <laughs> Kerry gold butter with canola oil. I'm like, yeah. the other options here, go ahead and add in garlic and herbs. I think that's amazing. I'm all right with that. If you want to soften it up or maybe strip some of the salt out, they have an unsalted one. Dude, I don't care about that stuff. Right. I'm a cyclist. I'll sweat out all that salt anyway. It really doesn't bother me. But the whole, you strip, how are you stripping out the fat, number one? And then the other one, you added in canola oil. Are you kidding me? Like, so now- yeah. Yeah. People that were cooking with pure Kerry gold before aren't going to know any better, and they're going to start cooking with the new canola oil mixed yeah, one. Well, so and what, that's, what's what's yeah. going to happen there? Tell us what's going to happen with that specific butter. Boy, I hope people I hope people boycott it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, for your standpoint, if I start at, okay, I wake up in the morning, I pour olive oil in my cast iron pan. I went back to the old school baby, and I heat that up, and I throw my eggs in and I make an omelet in my cast iron pan. I use either that, or I throw in a little Kerrygold butter for flavor, or I use both, because I fuel my body off of fat. It's great energy, people. If I switch over to butter with canola oil, what's that gonna do? If I'm superheating that in a cast iron pan, that can't be as good as the pure Kerrygold. Oh, uh, it's not, especially for cooking. And, and I don't think you should cook with olive oil, just so you know, but- okay. Um, I mean, you should have, you should definitely eat it, put it on your salad as much as you can possibly get, soak it into vegetables. I think people could cook vegetables and butter and then put olive oil on them. You okay. know I mean? That's the ideal thing or coconut oil because, because it's saturated and that's yeah. the beauty of it is. So you don't it, recommend even, even cooking with olive oil either. Like I don't, I don't, I don't jack. I, I literally put it in a little and then as soon as the pan's warm, I don't, like, I don't superheat it. I immediately throw my eggs in. I don't, eggs, like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't bring the pan to a smoking heat or anything like that. Yeah, with eggs, it's probably okay. But even there, it's a little risky because it, it does it, – I don't know how, many, you know how much of that sa uh, fat is going to get oxidized, but oxidized fat is just so bad for people okay. that it's, it's, it's better, I think, to cook with butter and, and, co or, and or coconut oil, depending on the taste. Okay. And that, again, that's because it's saturated, so it can't become oxidized, at least on the fatty acid tail. Okay. So, you know, I mean, it's a little technical. And in fact, that's why I literally drew a picture of a fatty acid up here for people that are watching. I was looking at that back there. I'm like, I wonder if that's for us. <laughs> yeah. Well, I figured I better draw it before we get on because if I, I'm sitting here drawing it. I, mainly was, I could see the OH behind your head, but, um, or HO, is that backwards? Hydroxide? Well, that's, yeah, that's, the, that's called like the head group of the fatty acid. Okay. 
And then this is the tail of the fatty acid. So the tail looks like, I don't know, like an accordion or something. So you're, so you're referring to the carbons? Or yeah, no? those are all carbons. So okay. yeah, all of those junctures, those little joints, those are just shorthand. That's how chemists draw the structure of, of fatty acid. And that's what they mean. That's how they indicate that this is where carbons are. And uh, this one's, by the way, it's called palmitic acid. It's 16 carbons long. And, uh, you, and you that's know, a lot though, right? Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's average. It's pretty okay. much most fat, you know, it's okay. 16 to 18 and totally saturated. You can see there's no double bonds and double bonds usually would be indicated by like another line. Okay. Oh, so you, you would see like uh, basically line. two angled lines layered on top of each other running parallel. Yep, 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 okay. Yep, so basically yep. just literally like laying or another, another, uh, drawing over top of that drawing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, uh, you know, just on one spot or another spot, you know, somewhere here or there, like oleic, if you typed in oleic acid into Google, you'd see those double bonds and those get, you know, those become oxidized because, uh, yeah, pull it up on your screen for people that are watching. I think it's worth, it's yeah. worth getting real specific on this one. Although I hate that image, but, uh, oh, actually there we go. It just, it just got clear. There you go. Perfect. So that's, that top one there is, is trans oleic acid. That's what you'd normally see. Mm -hmm. And you see that little extra line, you know, and you got that long accordion and then you got one extra line. Zoom in on that bad boy. I love touch screens. There we go. Yeah. Um, right above the letter D, you see that extra line in there? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I mean, that's a double bond. So that's how, science, that's how chemists indicate that there's a double bond. That's where it gets oxidized. We start heating that up and boom, it, it actually puts a piece of like an oxygen right so there. Is it like releasing a piece of itself, I guess? Uh, or or you, have you literally changed its, its chemical makeup? Oh yeah, for sure. You change okay. the chemical makeup by adding an oxygen. So that's a really reactive little spot there. Okay. If you add oxygen and of course the air has oxygen. So you start heating it up and that speeds up molecular motion. So when you start seeing, for example, a lot of smoke coming off your oil in the pan, you're, you're oxidizing a lot of that's it. The well, oxi that's the oxidant. That's it could be oxidative uh, reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, but but if it's saturated and there's no double bond there, there's nowhere to put oxygen there. So you're not you know so you can't make oxidized fat in the same way. Hmm. So in other words, you can cook the crap out of your butter, and I mean uh, <laughs> maybe not you know it'll sizzle. Crazy, but it'll sizzle, but I've never seen it smoke. I mean at least on my pan anyway. Yeah, and coconut oil is the same way because it's saturated. This one we're looking at on your screen is unsaturated because it has that double bond. Yep. And, you know, and that's why I actually prefer saturated fats when you're cooking because it's actually healthier. And, uh, you know, this idea that, that saturated fat is so bad for you, you know, I don't even think that's correct. Like I said at the beginning, you know, this, the, what the AHA did, the American Heart Association, is they said coconut oil, you know, saturated fat is bad. Coconut oil is saturated, therefore, coconut oil is bad. Yeah, it's way too general, right? Well, I don't even agree with the idea that saturated fat is bad. I don't even think the science agrees with that, you know? Well, again, doesn't our body require saturated fats? Oh, for sure, yeah. Right, so for, we, have, we have all these heart doctors who aren't taking the time to study this. Instead, they just follow what the AHA tells them to say, yep. going back to our problem of blanket messaging, yep. and they admit it. Even the even Mr. Paleocardiologist, until he met his 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 more natural path wife, and they became the doctors Wolfson. He said it himself. Jack has said it. He's like, dude. He's like, I was just following what we what we all did. He didn't know any better. And then he got to the point where he's like, wait a minute, I'm not actually getting people healthier. All I'm doing is pushing statins yep. and and getting people committed to surgeries and all this stuff. He's like. How are we actually finding the root cause and addressing the root cause? All of that is just medical band-aids. Right. Yeah. And, and they, that's the problem with not having nutrition as a class, as a required class, you know, in medical school or, you know, a, a series of classes. They should be having nutrition classes every semester in medical school. Oh, God, yes. Because it's so important. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, and that's that, you know, the idea that we should be prescribing statins to everybody you know, it's real unpopular to say in the medical community because there's so much money at stake, but it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Cholesterol is extremely important to our bodies also. You know, you talk about saturated fat being, you know, a necessary part of our body. So is cholesterol. And, you know, the, the statin thing is, is a mess as well. well. And it's funny because that's why I loved, I've had on uh, Dr. Sylvia Tara. She's the, uh, spent years in the, in, 
uh, I don't know if it was biology or biochemistry, I'm blanking, but she wrote, you know, The Secret Life of Fat, new yep. book that came out this year. You got Dr. Jeff, Jack Wolfson also on the same page. Even the, even the neurologist, uh, Jack Cruz, on the same page. You, all of you guys are on the same page. Yeah. Well, that's because if you're not consuming it, yeah. healthy cholesterol. Right. Vinny Toitorich has said it. He's not even a doctor because he brings on all you gurus as well. It's like, guys, like, if you don't eat it, your body's going to make it. With so that, yeah. help, like, help the listeners understand this. Why? If we strip all the cholesterol out of our diet, yep. healthy cholesterol people, yep. why does our body make it? It's so important. It's so necessary. I mean, okay, so you're like, if you, you know how important vitamin D is, mm -hmm. if you don't have cholesterol, your body can't make vitamin D when you go out in the sunshine. Oh, wait a minute. So you're telling me that if I, uh, I strip all the eggs out of my life, for example, and all the healthy cholesterol, but it's okay because the news and the AHA and everybody else is saying, hey, man, if you, uh, everybody's vitamin D deficient, start embracing sun a little more. So I could sit out there and maybe I'm going to go tanning twice a week. You know, I'll get more sun. Uh, I'll go mountain biking more. I'll go running more, you know, whatever. I'm doing all that. Yep. But if I'm not consuming healthy cholesterol, I'm basically wasting my time with the vitamin D goals. Pretty much. But here's the, here's the nuance there. It, your body, because cholesterol is so important, your body can make it from saturated fat. All right. So let's say you, you know, let's say your body, you know, like you say, your brain, by the way, has a ton of cholesterol. It's DHA and cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason it's super important and your body makes it for you if, if for some reason you're deficient in it, in your diet. So let's say you're not eating cholesterol, you know, which I don't think is, is that smart, but let's just say you, do, you, start, you start eliminating it from your diet and which isn't, again, it's not natural. It's not the way humans have been eating, but you do that. What does your body do? It responds by taking saturated fat going through like 20 different enzymatic steps, you know, this huge, long, energetic, you know, this process, this huge process and making cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And that's where statins come in is these, the statin drug inhibits that process. The, the, it inhibits your, it stops your body's ability to take fat and turn it into cholesterol. So wait a minute, because now we're, we're really cooking with some fat now. <laughs> um, you're telling me that if I follow these AHA guidelines uh, or the Amer or the, uh, the SAD diet, you know, the SAD, the, our, our standard American diet, um, I cut out my saturated fat, I cut out my cholesterol, and I'm not doing any supplementation. And let's say I'm still going out and tanning. I'm like, or trying to get more sun to get more vitamin D. Like maybe I am doing that. I'm kind of just spinning my wheels, right? Like I'm not yeah. really giving my, build, my body the building blocks. It gets worse because your sex hormones, like your testosterone and your DHEA and some of these other, these sex hormones are also made from cholesterol. Oh, so this, not, this connects us back to your studies now for the estrogen, estrogen, estrogeneration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's all interconnected, you know, these hormones, you start throwing those off and you start feeling bad and, you know, you can go back to the episode we did before and, and you can start looking at the problems with that. Well, and, yeah. So, so what is, what is, what is some of the answer here? I mean, we've been beating up AHA for a while. Um, we've been educating as well. Okay. I, we got way more scientific than I was expecting. I was very impressed with, uh, your diagram. We got to bring it up here on the internet, but I mean, what is, what is some of the ways that we can, I guess, I don't want to say people should stop following AHA. <laughs> Sometimes you should, but how do we counteract this, man? Like what, what are some action items? I guess that again, to our listeners, guys, technically he's a PhD, so he's got more uh, clout than I do. But I always tell people like this podcast, this is free content. We're just trying to get you guys to become your own inner physician and, and question the status quo and do some research and test some healthy steps in your life to see what's working for you. So again, take any advice that he and I are giving you today is with a grain of salt, but like, what are some ways that... I don't know, Anthony, as the Dr. J himself, like how are you to counteract these crazy AHA articles? Yeah, I think, I mean, thankfully we live in the internet age so you can get this information. And I think people should just totally ignore it. Just totally, totally keep eating coconut oil for one. Okay. And, and, and saturated in butter. Wait, you know. so wait, what about this? Boom. Duck fat, cool. Oh, wow. That looks great, yeah. Beef I mean, tallow, assuming that those animals fat. are eating healthy, yeah. yeah. Grass-fed, yeah, that's Bice, good. Pasture-raised oh. bison tallow. What is tallow? 
Remember how, if our listeners, guys, I mentioned it earlier in the fast food industry, they used to use uh, animal fats in their fryers. Well, the other name for animal fat is tallow. I have a jar of this above my stove next to the awesome. coconut oil, next to my olive oil. Tallow is animal yeah. fat. It's what but, we always did. <laughs> and, and a lot of these tribes, you know, you go into these native tribes. I mean, they ate organs, including the brain. And we talked earlier, you know, the brain is made up of all these good fats. So it's not like these native tribes, you know, are somehow not eating fats in their diet. They, they were eating fats too, a lot of fats. And they consider that a great source of, you know, energy and vitality. And we should too. And, and the research backs that up. That's the problem. I think with the AHA, they, they cherry picked a few studies and, you know, they showed that quote unquote saturated fat is bad. There's other studies that shows there's no difference in mortality. You know, in, in fact, I have one here. I printed one, another study. I know we're getting a little te technical today, but. Well, no, uh, I, I'm going to ask you, are any of, any of these actually public or no? Are these, are these are still locked away? <laughs> no, this study is 2016 in the British Journal of Medicine. If that's linkable, dude, yeah. email me the link and I will yeah. embed it in your show notes. Because again, okay. guys, we put as much content as I can on the show notes. I want to backlink this stuff for you guys because even if I don't have it on the, on the, uh, my blog or, or Dr. J doesn't have it, you know, on his site, ajconsultingcompany.com. Yep. Again, all this is linked. I want to make sure we're giving you as much as we can. We don't hide anything. I will even link the AHA articles. I don't care. Go read their crap and then read our crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's become so clear that the, I think the AHA is, is being influenced by the comp by corporate America. You know, I mean, that's what it, that's what it comes down to. That's why, you know, their, their heart check program that they have, that little heart picture that says it's AHA certified on various food it's items. A mar it's a, I'm a marketing guy. It's a marketing well, you, tool. Well, you have to pay for it. If you want to have that little check mark yep. on your, on your products, you have to pay a bunch of money for it. That's what it comes down to. And because they've invested so much money into back and forth between their lobbying relationships between the agricultural world and the pharmaceutical world, Yep. All of these little logos, heart healthy or, yep. you know, yep. or uh, organic. Dude, yep. there's a lot of great farms around here that I buy from that are not organic, but I know how they're raising their stuff. They yep. just don't want to spend the thousands of dollars for that little organic inspection. And then right. you get your certification and then they make you come back and they have to keep doing, you have to pay to have them come back to just to keep the organic certification. It's a whole yep. it's program. A racket. Yeah. yeah, it's a racket. Yeah. But this they, paper they, that they I was, claim it's helping you. They claim it's okay. Well, we have to make sure it stays organic. And I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But if you notice everything that's grain related is heart healthy. Yeah, exactly. That's where I was kind of going with that. Yeah. <laughs> and corn and soy. Right? Yeah. Right. Like, oh, I mean, uh, uh, canola, canola oil in your butter. Really? Because yeah. you decided to add in, you just had to convince a pure company like Kerrygold that, oh, well, because our butter doesn't spread as easily. That's literally, if you remember the comments in that Facebook post, Carrie Gold saw my posts and they oh, yeah. emailed me personally. <laughs> I have the email. They literally, one of their guys emailed me directly. Little old wow. Scott from Live the Fuel. That's awesome. <laughs> explaining why they did it. And they said, wow. quote, uh, you know, again, modified, but long story short, the consumers had complaints of being able to spread the butter easily. Oh, who cares? So... <laughs> They asked why they added in the, fuck, the, the freaking grain-based oil into the butter to make it spread nicer. It's like, dude, wow. you have a social responsibility as a company to just keep things real. But because your marketing department gave in, now you got to sit there and make a manufactured, you literally have created manufactured butter now by adding in incorrect ingredients. And yeah. over, that is now over-processed. Well, that's what the problem with people like the AHA coming out, the president of the AHA and saying can canola oil is good and corn oil is good. Yeah, because uh, the grain companies are paying them to say that. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and, and here's another, well, let me just go back to this study, right? From the yeah. British Journal of Medicine I was just holding up. Yeah, hook us up. Because this is a great example. So the AHA in their, in their little uh, recent report and all this, they were saying that saturated fat is bad. Okay. This paper here, 2016, again, it's British Journal of Medicine, which is literally one of the biggest medical journals in the world, right up there with New England Journal of Medicine. Most people in America don't realize it's so, it's so prestigious. Uh, but not, not, all, not everything comes from America here in the U.S. of A. Okay? There's, there's other very intelligent com countries too. <laughs> well, 
I mean, we are leading the scientific uh, charge across, you know, across the world, at least right now. But, but yeah, I mean, the British Journal, they publish phenomenal stuff. And what I like about them is they're not biased by the corporations nearly as much. So here, here we go, 2016. They've got a paper, it's called Re-Evaluation of the Traditional Diet Heart Hypothesis. And they looked at huge amounts of uh, data and they concluded that cholesterol lowering interventions showed no significant, no evidence of benefit on mortality from coronary heart disease. In other words, heart attack. In other words, it doesn't make any difference in terms of how many people are dying of heart attacks uh, from the saturated fats. So and, and cholesterol, like cholesterol lowering, you know, all these, these interventions, statins. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable to me that, you know, we've gotten ourselves into this situation where we think LDL, like our cholesterol, is the gold standard somehow of our health overall in terms of our arteries. It's not. And it's information. Again, goes back to surface level analysis, right? The average consumer is just looking at the headlines. They're skimming, especially nowadays with social media. We're, we're not diving into the details. Like, again, so... Everybody's throwing out, what's your HDL versus your ADL or LDL? Right, right. Like yeah, I, donate, yeah. I donate blood every eight weeks. And like, oh, well, we give you a free heart analysis. And all they do is they send me back two numbers, your oh, HDL God. and your ADL, LDL. And I'm like, thanks to my years of learning, I'm like, that means nothing to me. I mean, a great for a high level person who doesn't understand this, but that means nothing. Yeah, they, well, here's, here's what they did for me. And here's what they do for doctors, right? They, when you go through the the process of becoming a PhD in biochemistry or becoming a medical doctor, they sit you down in the classes and they say, there's a disease called hypercholesterolemia where you have a mutation. Okay. Yeah. Well, it means you have way too much cholesterol. So you have a mutation and your body just makes way too much cholesterol. You don't regulate your cholesterol. And I mean, it's insane. It's not like a little bit high, right? Your LDL isn't a little bit high. It's insane. Like 500 or something. Oh, it's even above that sometimes. Yeah, it's wow. crazy numbers. And, and what happens there is most of those people with that mutation, they die of heart attacks before age 30 or whatever. You know, it's really difficult for them. And, you know, the only intervention that really, really works is avoiding cholesterol in your diet and taking statins. In that case, statins are phenomenal. But what they do in these classes and in the education, they, they tell you, they conclude from that, that, you know, like I say, that case, that instance, that weird mutation, that lowering your cholesterol and really looking at your LDL works for everybody, right? It's right. a smart strategy for everybody. Well, again, great analysis, great case, but that's, that's a genetic mutation. Yeah. Why yeah. would you then take that and extrapolate that and, and make, it, make people think that, well, but if it works for them, it's going to work for everybody. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, that's how they teach it, right? Yeah. And, and really what's come out, I think, over the last 20 years is that inflammation is the root cause. So even if you have high cholesterol, your, your arteries are fine unless you have inflammation, like you're super stressed out or, you know, whatever, you're eating a terrible diet that's causing inflammation. And then those inflammatory proteins in your blood cause little lesions. They cause little injuries in your, in your arteries and in your blood vessels. And those injuries get healed by cholesterol, then we find cholesterol in the artery and then we blame cholesterol on everything, even though and it's inflammation. And again, regarding heart disease, heart attack, all of that, from, again, from a layman's terms, my knowledge is that, and again, actually, Erin Sparrow brought this up on today's aired episode. She was talking about, we were talking about LDL and she's like, actually, you, gotta, you wanna look at those really, really tiny particulates that are creating the damage. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, if you wanna, I don't wanna say slicing into the blood vessel, but you know, damaging the lining of the blood vessel. And then the, then the cholesterol comes to save the day. And everybody, and it's funny because if you talk to a heart surgeon and Vinny has brought it up on his show, his friend yep. is a heart surgeon. Like not, he calls it a, uh, you're a plumber versus whatever. Anyway, like he's like, oh, my yeah. friend literally electrician. does. Electrician versus yeah, plumber. Yeah, yeah right? I, I love that. But he <laughs> says, he's like, listen, he said, she even said, he's like, when you go in there, are you cleaning out cholesterol? And she's like, no. What are you cleaning out? plaque what is the plaque from inflammation yeah he's like so yep. you're not cleaning out cholesterol no <laughs> he's like then why are you telling people to cut the cholesterol out <laughs> yeah like, it yeah. doesn't add up <laughs> right right well it does because it adds up in the in this sense statins make a ton of money mm -hmm. and these drug companies do have a lot of influence on the education and a lot of these science journals 
And so they have, they've really invested in this idea that cholesterol is bad and they oversimplify it by pretending that LDL is cholesterol, HDL is cholesterol. And statins are for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and lowering your cholesterol is somehow good for everyone. Like that has become like, Oh, you walk in and because your doctors are only now because the industry has become this way, you only get 10 to 15 minutes with a doctor. Anyway, he comes in, looks at you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All right. So here's your prescription. We're going to do some statins. Blah, blah, blah. Like it's like the go-to answer now. Cause I know, Jack, be, Jack yeah. Wolfson has talked about this. He's like, yeah. it's insulting. It's just like, dude, we're not a robotic assembly line. This is your fellow mankind. Like we're looking to find a cure, a fix, not a Band-Aid. I know, and they, they should be looking at C-reactive protein, you know, and looking at inflammation through hemoglobin A1C and some of these other, they should be looking at inflammation. I mean, that's kind of the point. Which is, uh, which we've already have uh, plenty of studies to back up is heavily triggered by excessive sugar and grain consumption nowadays. Exactly. Because I mean, we've been doing it yeah. for 20 plus years now. I know, and that's, that's where the money comes in again, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't want to admit that. But, <clears throat> you know... <laughs> Uh, it's, it's just really all overall, really frustrating thing. And <laughs> hey, you and me both, man, that's why like, I was really pumped. I mean, I was pumped about Aaron's episode too, but I was like, because I just got to know you and I'm like, Anthony and I are going to have such a passionate episode. This is going to be awesome. I mean, frustrating, but awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And because I mean, you, you're, you're coming from it from a beautiful, pure scientific perspective because you know what the hell is actually going on inside of our brains and at the cellular level and inside of our bodies. Whereas I'm coming in from the consumer, a more educated consumer, but I don't know everything yet either. And I'm still here to learn along with what you've been teaching us today. And it's, and for our listeners, but it's like, guys, like this is what we're talking about. This is why we're so frustrated is like, there is stop looking at the surface level education because yeah. a lot of it is money and marketing driven and they have a choice to how they publish their article. And if you really read the articles, they're all surface level. There's no, yep. that article, when they put that out, there was no science backing that. Or there was like, like four examples well, or four yeah, studies right. or something ridiculous like that. Out of a ton of them, yeah. And, and let, me, let me just add one other thing that kind of, I think it's good for people to recognize an, another factor that skews the science. And that is age, you know, because... As mm. we age, our risk for heart attack goes up. I mean, that's the most uh, cor correlative aspect, just like cancer, right? Like the biggest risk factor for cancer is our age. Yes. So, you know, one of these things a lot of these studies don't do is they don't look at the age. So in other words, let's say you have a group of people from age 16 all the way to age 50, and you look at LDL. And by the way, our LDL does rise a little bit as we age. Gee, I wonder so, why. Yeah. So, well, so what happens is if you lump all of these age groups together and then you, you look at heart attack risk, you're going to find heart, more heart attacks in people with higher LDL in some cases because you're looking at people, you know, because the LDL raises as we age. But really what they're looking at is age. You know, there's, there's all this nuance within all these different studies. But I think the studies that, and by the way, it's called epidemiology. Yes. You know, epidemiology is just so... So uh, it's not flawed, but it's open to flaws. You know, it's Vin, just, Vinny talks heavily about that, how everybody's just throwing out those studies and thinking that's enough. Yeah, and it's super susceptible to flaws. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. So these epidemiology studies, you know, I mean, we live in this kind of computerized robotic society, you know, where, where you know, our digital, our digital technology gets better every year. And it's true. You know, we can see that. We can track that. We look at our phones. It gets better. The problem is, is people think science works the same way where we add a little bit, you know, add a little here, add a little here, add a little here, and it just gets better and better and better. But in some, you know, science is a lot more complex and a lot more confusing and a lot more open to bias than, than working with digital technology or electronics. So what happens in science is, you know, there's a lot more spin and a lot more confusion and it's not the same way. You know, if you publish a report that says this computer, you know, is, has better technology than last year's computer and you back that up with good data, it's probably a hundred percent true. But if you come out with a report and say LDL is bad because of this, because of one study or four studies, that might not be true. You know, like you have to yeah. be open to that possibility. But I think people, because we live, again, we live in this computerized world, they, we get kind of, I don't know, lulled into this. 
acceptance that we're just continuously expanding our knowledge and getting more refined. But in reality, sometimes we're not, you know? Well, and that's why you got to look at everything. And it's, yeah. I mean, perfect example. And cause we're coming to the end of the episode here and I wanted to make sure that, I don't know if he is going to listen to this, but I want to make sure I want to connect to this whole one sided versus the other. Look at everything. Right. Yeah. And you and I are actually commenting back and forth with one of my CrossFit athletes from my gym, uh, Ian. Yep, yep. on the Facebook page and a perfect example. And he's, I, I get where he's coming from. He's looking at stuff, right? Like, and I'm, I'm going to bring it up here because that way, because yep. I mean, again, this is why you and I, I think are doing things the right way. I will share everything. I don't give a crap because that way no one can say that I don't, I'm not at least trying to entertain everything. But like his commentary was, I don't want to troll and cause arguments. Yeah. But I just like to point out that the reference and he's referring not to the AHA article, He's referring to the Jack Wolfson article, which is right here that I shared. Is coconut oil deadly? This was his response to yep. the AHA. Which so I shared article. that. Yep. And he, he started saying, you know, well, the author in this article cites, you know, it's citing as having the 